Okay, one and all, I'm trying something different here. Uh, instead of me blabbing in front of the classroom, I'm in the back watching me blab on the screen to you. So there you have it. We are starting the next section where we're talking about God's covenant. And we are talking about um, the creation stories. And, and um, we're going to look at <clears throat> Adam and Eve and, and Moses and all of these different things. And it's so beautiful because... When you're looking at the Old Testament scriptures, this is the first religion where you're introducing this covenantal relationship between um, God and God's people. So no more of this way of seeing of God out there somewhere, um, you know, of pixie dust and lightning bolts that I've talked about, but now seeing God as, as entering a relationship um, with God's chosen people. And spoiler alert, that's all the people. Um, and so what's really important to know is that the Bible, this book here, has a creation story um, that involves goodness and beauty. And that's one of the very first and one of the only creation stories that isn't created out of God's fighting and one God wins. And so the first creation story in found in the book of Genesis is so important and it's often overlooked. This first creation story, what's so important about it is it is all about the goodness of creation and the goodness of humanity. And uh, that goodness, that original goodness, that original um, innocence, this positive anthropology is a way to look at it, which the, pos the, the goodness of humanity. Um, and that's so important that that's always the place that you start with your being is that you are good and you are beautiful. That's how you are made in this image and likeness of God. So this first one, it says in the beginning, God, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. Now there's something that's huge. Is he talking about the sun, this writer, in this poem? Nope. This is where we would call the cosmic Christ. This, this God's love overflowing into creation. That was my impression. I thought it was pretty good. Okay, moving on. Let there be light and there was light and God saw that it was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky and there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth and the waters that were gathered together, the sea called the seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seeds and fruits and trees of every kind on the earth that bear fruit with seeds in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seeds of every kind, the trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seeds in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. And God said that there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let there be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said that the waters bring forth the swarms of living creatures and that the birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and everything, every living creature that moves in every kind to which the, uh, with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. 
God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters and the seas and let the birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that crept, creeps upon this earth, gr uh, the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image, our image, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. I know. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created humankind in God's image. In the image of God, he created them, or God created them, male and female, God created them. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish in the sea and the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, see, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is given to every plant, um, sorry, upon the face of the earth and every tree and seed of its fruit. You shall have them for food and to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the air and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life. I give every, every even the, every green fruit, plant of food for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made. And indeed it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished in all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done and rested on the seventh day from the work. And I'm going to pause there because, beloved, you are not just good, but you are very good. And so all of this story, we see the goodness and the beauty that is in God's creation. This is right. Hi, Lucy. Lucy, you're very good, too. <laughs> it's my dog. To come down here by the river to remind this beauty that is all around us everywhere all the time this always is and that we are created not just good but very good and so we see this in this covenant between between us and god that god is indwelling in everything all around us and that we are made not just good but very good and so let's remember that and so that's where we're going to start we're going to start with knowing that this um, the importance of our original goodness and God loving us as we are because God made us in the image and likeness of God. So we are made in God's image of love and light and, and goodness and um, just as you are and we are called to grow in God's likeness, meaning continuing to practice love and practice our faith and, and practice speaking uh, uh, truth to stupid and all of that, what we talked about before. Um, so let's start there. Now you listen to this, there'll be a couple of jot notes for you to take to try to remember um, some of this parts of this first creation story and then we'll dive into the next one, the second creation story. Grace and peace, y'all. Now this, I'm going to stop this, but I'm still in the room, so that's kind of weird, and I don't know. Bye.